Hi, this is Paul Linder, Tech Monitor uh, channel, and uh, this is my update on the Sea Hunt, which is the 135th scale German midget submarine from World War II. This is the B5 version, which is actually the one that was the very last model they actually used for this particular uh, submarine. Um, it's smaller than the uh, X craft, but it's, it, I suppose because of the coning tower that you can see there, it just looks more subbish than the other one, even though technically. That's got a coning tower, but it runs for nearly the three quarters of the length of the ship, uh, the submarine. So anyway, but back to this one. Um, the actual uh, dome is now in place, and I did discuss this with Switcher last night about making it slightly scuffed and worn. But the more I thought about it, I thought, well, it's only done four operations. It's they most probably would clean it up when it got back to uh, before it went out on its next mission. So as far as I'm concerned, the reason it's nice and shiny is because they've had a good polish up on it to make it make it seeable. So when it's underwater, the, the actual crew member, or the commander, can actually look up through there and see see what's what. And so that's why I'm saying it's polished. But if I did another one, possibly and of uh, the earlier version, which is the one I will build again, uh, the earlier version of Sea Hunt, without this or this propeller, it actually has a different one within, with with in within a circular housing. Um, I would actually um, most probably make it a bit and um, put a bit of sort of silk varnish over it so it, it mats it down so it's not so see through and I think that's the way to do it. Go with a varnish, um, a, a sheen varnish. Most probably use the Alclad to do that as well. Anyway, but back to the submarine. <clears throat> I've done the detail painting it apart from one thing. The only thing I haven't done is the periscope, which I'll be doing that uh, most probably tonight just to finish it off. But what I have done is done the actual timber in there on the top of the roof there. It's only four slats of timber that was used because the crew member would get out there and sit there on their house. It must have been really uncomfortable, especially in a rough sea. But he would sit that sit on that bit and put his legs down inside there. Um, I used Vallejo's we uh, weathered wood and I will put the number in the link below uh, when you see it but just to let you know what the number is. But it um, weathered wood is really a nice one. I think it was in a set originally because I've took them out and put them on a little rack so so easier for me to find. So weathered wood, no varnish on it, no shininess to it because at the end of the day, I don't think they would have mucked about putting varnish wood there towards the end. They would have just stuck some wood up there and it would have, even if it was a thin coat of varnish, the seawater would have eventually got through to it and made it look a bit worn like it is there now. So that was that. Another thing I've done is uh, the torpedo, as you can see, didn't receive any weathering at all. The submarine did. The actual uh, submarine received a um, 502 oil paints and from the set uh, in this question is uh, ABT305, which is this one. I used the neutral grey, which is there, and uh, it's in the set. You can buy them individually, evidently, because I think I've been e-models do it, and uh, I shouldn't advertise, but the e-models do do it, and I think you can get it online as well anywhere. We just put the, um, a, um, <clears throat> just put the, um, excuse me, uh, 502, and it'll come up with it at uh, stores. But I know e-models has got a good, uh, good selection of them. Uh, anyway, but I use the neutral grey, and I also use the burnt, burnt umber, which is uh, I'll show you now, which is this one. And but the burnt umber was used very sparingly, just in little places, and and I dotted it every its place. But may, mainly I use neutral grey throughout the submarine. It the submarine looked uh, 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 like a sheeny coat, as you know, because the last video you saw the submarine looking very sheenified. And I could have left it like that and just said it's brand new coming off this assembly line, but I decided I wanted the submarine to look a bit as if it's been used, but not overly. So this has been on about three or four missions and, and managed to survive and come back. And, and he's had his torpedoes reloaded for the next mission. And so that's that. So I've used, I used their neutral grey throughout. And, and I love the yours now, and uh, I didn't think I would. But I do, and Switcher has actually um, convinced me, and I've um, now I've done two models using oils, and I'm looking forward to using them on uh, tank later on as well. I wanted to build um, a late version King Tide with, with um, Zimmerit, and I will be using the um, Dragon Kit for that. Uh, but uh, that will be later on in the year, hopefully. Uh, but anyway, in the case, so I've just actually, what I do with the torpedoes, I left them as uh, with no weathering whatsoever, because obviously these torpedoes are made, manufactured, brought to the yard, and loaded onto the submarines, ready to be taken out to sea and fired. Now, I've used brass on the propeller, and I did use a faint green wash over it, just so it's sitting out in the open for a little while before it goes out, and it's got a bit of a tint, but that would have been cleaned up once it got into the seawater, because salt is in the, in the water, and it would give it a nice, and uh, would shine, shine it all back up again. <coughs> so... But what I did on this, I actually used some uh, natural steel there. That's a flower colour and all. From the new spray sets, the, little, the new newer branches I've got. And, but I painted it on and it went on quite nicely. And 
I, the reason I my, I said to switch on our Skype last and the reason I went for steel for them is basically I was saying there was a shortage of brass and they'd only use brass unless they really had to. So I'm saying they milled those the, the mask uh, f um, made them out of uh, steel and that way and he said, well, it would have been brass. And I said, well, my idea is that they, they actually were put, made with steel because basically once they're on there, they've only got a short life. So even in, this, in the water going towards the, on the mission, they're in the water then. But once they're fired, they make their way to the craft. They either hit or miss, but they end up on the seabed. And, and it wasn't matter whether they're made brass or steel. They're, they're going to uh, be lost forever. So that's my idea behind that. So I went for... for for that actual um, steel, it actually says it on one of the uh, plans there to you to do steel on one of the instructions on for the subs. I'll try and find it which one is, and I might be able to find one for you. Um, there it is, yeah. So I think I'll just show you there quickly, and there they are, and they're actually in steel colour there. So it's you know it's one of those things, and they're actually saying the submarine steel, the actual torpedo steel as well. So. <clears throat> but I went for steel for the back anyway for the prop, so I'm quite happy with that. <coughs> so, what else is there to do? Uh, that is it really, because it's basically, oh yeah, no, I actually use some uh, AKF stuff. It's um, um, grease, and I actually put grease on all the joints on the actual uh, release mechanism for the torpedo. And the reason for that is it would have been grease to manipulate it. Underwater, the grease would have still stuck fast to it because these things don't go like uh, rocket ships. And it would have stayed there and it, it would allow the manipulation of the, the actual equipment to be used and maintain and stop it rusting as well. So the so last thing you want to do is fire, is release your fire torpedoes and the mechanism fails. So grease and the and joints would have most probably been the case. So I did that. You can't see it too much, but there is a bit of a shine there when you look at the model itself. So that is it really. Um, the number, I've um, got a feeling, that, I mean the number, I'm really happy with the number because it actually sets the submarine off. But at the end, I'm not sure whether it would have been used in, in actual service as such. It might have actually painted over it rather than do that and put a uh, zero out of six somewhere smaller. I don't know. But anyway, but I'm really pleased with the number. It just looks at it. It sort of stands out. Because um, with the grey, um, with the grey, uh, uh, a neutral grey wash over it, the oil wash, it just toned the white down a little bit so it's not quite so much in your face and it's cool. And they did the same for the decals. They was all because they was all clear coated over anyway, the oil oil with the with the turpentine uh, wouldn't have um, affected them anyway. So I'm really really pleased and I can't say that anymore. It's a, been a fabulous build. Um couple of issues on the way nothing major really I mean at the end of the day that the, the, the these bits are fragile though whenever you're doing that whoops wrong way round these uh, mechanisms here are fragile. They're made of three pieces. Was it one? Two, yeah, I think it was three pieces. They're very small. They could have moulded it in one go, but it does add to add detail to it. So there you go. So that was about the only fiddly, really fiddly bit I would say was done. Oh, oh, and also putting the little um, uh, etchings on the torpedo at the front. Uh, but I did that method I told you earlier on, so I won't explain it again because that was in the previous video. So that is it that is the finished model oh you will see i've used the base and uh, uh, there was another model i built one about two years ago and i'm going to try and find his uh, video and put his name in the link just to so you can link to his one he done a lighter blue one and <clears throat> i think he he used uh, the the later build like this but he made an earlier version of it in some ways because he used the decals for one of the early versions which wouldn't have had this and wouldn't have had the prop at the back i did notice that so anyway but so that's one of those things and like they say when we're building models we build them to the way we want to build them so i'm quite happy i thoroughly enjoyed his build because i've watched all the videos as he was going through doing all these different these pre-shading bits and pieces i haven't done no pre-shading on this and uh, it most probably shows but to be honest with all the the oils that went over it the pre-shading is sort of there anyway because uh, you've got so many no matter which angle i look at it i've got different tonal uh, looks to it so it's quite quite nice as far as i'm concerned but the base he didn't like using it once he started to paint it because he didn't want to damage the paint but you don't damage the paint because if you go in there with a file underneath or a sandy stick as i did and, and wipe and where the bit the actual v, the square bit where you drops drops the the kill into it and i lift it up these bits in here i actually sanded them back so it's actually loose but it still holds it upright, but it's very loose and it doesn't affect the paintwork in any way, shape or form. I've still got my hole in the bottom because um, that's going to be uh, used to actually fix it to a wooden base. But am I pleased with it? Yes. So that's the end of this, really. Anyway, my next build for submarine was will be uh, the Bieber, 
which is the single mouse sub, which I spoke to about earlier on, <coughs> which wasn't overly successful, but was eventually used for a, as a training sub for the crews of the Sea Hunt uh, when they come out. So it was used, but it, but it did get extensive use for a while, and it wasn't very successful. And I think they lost more to the to rough seas because it wasn't a very good. Um, what the buoyancy was on the surface wasn't very clever. Because all these subs have to come up to recharge the batteries and then go back down again because they lose electric under the, under the water and then come up uh, and then they use diesel and then they buy the recharge the battery and then drop back down under water using battery. So there you go. So that is my sea hunt. That is, this is the final reveal of the sea hunt. Apart from one thing I've got to do is a little periscope there which you wouldn't even see anyway. So that's my little, little, little brush job tonight. It's going to take all of about oh, 20 seconds. <laughs> But it won't well, no, take a bit longer because I've got to do one, let it dry, and then put the clear coat over it, just a touch of clear coat. So here we go. So that's my sea hunt and the final reveal. I might just zoom in a little bit, see if I can zoom in and just give you a little bit more closer look. There you go. <coughs> that's the sea hunt. These little shiny bits, no problem. Um, that's where the actual, um, the old, uh, they've been mucking about and actually working, trying to get the TP to along. So they've actually took off some of them, the, the side muck. That's what the idea for that is as well. But other than that, it's still got muck at the top you can see and it just goes to a bit of shine when they've actually cleaned it up when it was working so that's the end i'm just going to put it back to as it was and back up it gives you a better view of the actual the wood at the top there you go and come back out there you go and that's the end of this video and thank you very much for watching and uh, as I said the next submarine I'll be, will be, be building with, with a bipper and uh, but I will be going back on to the Corvette shortly um, so towards the end of the month but I'm going to finish the the little angel intercept a bit with the one from Captain Scarlet I'm going to finish that now because I've got everything done apart from putting the the actual steering column in inside the cockpit and then start painting really that's all I've got to do on that little girl so thank you very much for watching this video and I'll catch you on the next one see ya